based in New York, she's an international businesswoman that informs clients how to trade successfully by utilizing her system. Melissa runs her own trading room and speaks through online seminars to clients around the world. Melissa also runs regular courses again to inform and teach people how to make the most of their abilities in the marketplace. Welcome to the show, beautiful superstar, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you. That was so nice. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay. How do uh, I put this slide up? Let me see. I'm going to make you an organizer at first that you would be able to see. Um, and let me see. Now you should be able to share your screen. Okay, can you see everything? Yeah, looks good. Uh, I will get back to you about 9.30. Hello, can everyone hear me? Good afternoon. Almost 12 o'clock here in New York. What a day for the market. Very interesting day. I don't know if anyone has uh, traded at all here today or seen anything. The market had a huge lift this morning, five minutes out of the gate. We ran up and made brand new all-time highs, and then we ended up selling off, a, 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 like, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes ago. So it's been quite a volatile time. But anyways, today I'm going to talk about how you can really earn a living trading or make six figures a, a year trading if, in fact, you want to do that, if you want to trade for a living. I'm teaching people how to do that. I've had my business, the stock swoosh, since 2012, and I've been trading since 2008. So it's almost 2020, and it's funny because it feels like I've been trading forever. I think once you get into the market and once you're doing it, um, you can't imagine you know, life without it, especially if you love to trade. And today is one of those days where every single trade works and it definitely, definitely is a fun day to trade. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200 GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I appear on Fox News and Fox Business Network and I always try to tweet before I'm on television uh, when to watch me. So let's get right into it here today. Let's focus on how you can make money trading, how you can make a living doing this, and how you can earn a good amount of money. Now, I say good amount. I say six figures a year. Obviously, it depends where you live. You may live in, in Ohio, and the cost of living in Ohio was very different than, for example, Ma Manhattan, okay, where I live. So it really depends what your goals are, but I think you have to start where you're at right now and then you have to say, okay, this is my goal for 2020 and what am I going to do to get there, okay? And I truly believe that anyone can achieve their goals if they have a, a, a plan of action and stay on that plan of action, even if you start out trading with a small account. Now, what do I mean by a small account? We will talk about some options trades today. You could train my system using options, or you could trade my system using equity trades. So you can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. Now, if you want to open up a margin account at a retail trader, you will need $25,000. If you do not have $25,000 and you want to trade on margin as an active day trader, then you will need to go to something called a proprietary day trading firm. If you have any questions about that, you can ask me now, or you can ask me later, or you can email me as well. But you can trade at proprietary day trading accounts with as little as 2,500. Now we're gonna talk about some advanced risk today, and also I'll give some examples of beginner risk too. But the amount of money that you risk per trade should definitely be in consideration with the amount of cash that you have in your account, okay? Even if you have a margin account, all right? So if your goal is to make six figures a year trading and say you only have $2,000, you have to be realistic about how long it's gonna take you to build your account that you can take the necessary risk to achieve those goals. It may not happen overnight, but if you are uh, strict and focused and disciplined on following and being consistent, I do believe you can do it. And again, since I've been teaching since 2012, since I've had the stock swoosh, one of the biggest uh, biggest things that I've seen, it's a, it's a commonality where why many people fail is, number one, they do not have a system that works to trade. 
and they don't follow any system at all. And number two, they, they may have one system or several systems, but they don't follow anything consistently. So therefore, they don't see the consistency in the results. So one day they're up, one day they're down. One day they're up, one day they're down. Kind of like that. And that is problematic. It's problematic for your emotion. It's problematic for your, for your finances, for your account. It's much better to be green Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't mean you're never going to take a loss. You may have some trades that lose. I have some trades that lose. But more trades that I do work than fail. So this is where the consistency comes into part. Okay, because you're looking to find a structure, a strategy that you can use consistently in order to profit so that you can achieve the goals. And you should look at your, your, your goals as something like where you're going up. So it's like taking 10 steps forward and you may take two steps back, but you're always moving up. Then you take five steps forward and you may take one step back. Because again, not every single trade that you're going to take works. Not every trade that I take works, but way more trades that I take work than do not. Now, today is a good example, though, because every every trade worked. We went long today. All the trades today were longs, although we're going to go over some trades from a couple days ago. But today was a day to go long. We went long Starbucks today, we went the market. Um, you know, things worked today to the upside. Any questions here so far? Anyways, my point is that it is very, 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 very important to be consistent. I think it's a big key to success. But of course, you still have to have a system that works. All right. So let's talk about time of day. So you get up in the morning and you say, okay, when am I going to trade? Well, I found that the best times to trade are when? In the morning. The market's open, the US market is open between 9.30 and four o'clock Eastern time. However, that being said, I find that between 9.30 and 10, and today was, was, was again, no exception to that, between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, you really have the biggest move the moves in the market and in stocks, the most volatile moves. Could be 10, 15, 10, 30. I'd say just to be safe, the first hour of the day, really you should block out. But usually we're done trading in the first 30 minutes of the day, okay? In that time period, you can catch a move. I'm, I'm usually trying to catch a dollar. And I'm using that as a rough estimate because some stocks are a little bit less expensive. 50, 60 cents is a move, but usually a dollar. And again, if it's more expensive, we might be looking for more than a dollar. Today was the Starbucks. We went long. It was almost a buck. If you stayed in it all the way up, actually it was more than a dollar. Okay. Went to 89 and changed. But in the morning is the time that you want to trade. And again, consistency as far as the time of the day. Okay, so I'm always looking to, to get trades in the morning. I'm always in between 9.30 and 10. And if I'm not taking trades by 10 o'clock, if I'm not in anything, then I'm probably not going to do any trades that day because I don't think anything is setting up correctly to day trade. So the time of the day that has the most volatility I've found is the first 30 to 60 minutes of the day. So if you want to make money as an active trader, again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you want to trade in the time period that has the volatility. Volatility is a good thing. Uh, if you if you take it in the right direction, but you have to take something in the right direction to make money no matter when you trade you if you are going to make money and a stock is rallying the only way you're going to make money is if you go long. Consequently, if you want to make money shorting, the only way you're going to make money shorting is if you're shorting a stock that's selling off. So you've got to get the direction right no matter what, but you want the moves, the moves, the moves, the moves, which you get when you have the volatility. So what is volatility? Volatility often refers to the amount of uncertainty or risk related to the size of changes of securities value. A higher volatility means that a securities value can potentially be spread out over a larger range of values. This means that the price of the security can change dramatically over a time period in either direction. A lower volatility means that a securities value does not fluctuate dramatically and tends to be more steady, okay? So I'm looking for volatility in stocks because I want to make a lot of money as fast as I can because if I'm day trading, I've only got between 9.30 and 4. That's it, okay? And again, you can do options with my system and hold them overnight if you want, or you could day trade options. And we'll go over that in a little bit here. But the idea of day trading is you've got to be in and you've got to be flat and out by 4. So I want the biggest move I can get within that period of time. Okay, so volatility is something that I'm looking for so that I can play on it. It's something called shock value. Many, many traders 
are confused because they wait and I find wait too long. They will wait and scan and scan after the market opens to try to pick which stocks to trade and find the direction they're going or try to predict where the market's going and take a trade late, wait till after 10 o'clock or even after 11 o'clock. This can get very confusing. And again, today's a great example, why? Because the market shot up like a rocket five minutes into the open and then sold off later. So you'd say, okay, what was the direction to get? Well, if you went long into the open, you profited and you would have never shorted at the top because you wouldn't have known where that was and the market's at the highs. So you have to be organized with what you're doing. I usually choose what stock I'm trading in the pre-market into the open. So I have it all decided sometimes as early as six o'clock in the morning what I'm doing. I'm looking for stocks that are gapping and I'm gonna to explain to you what a gap is in a minute. There are bullish gaps and there are bearish gaps. Not every gap works. However, I have a system that I designed and created where I look at 26 points on a daily chart while I would determine which stock I want to trade and in what direction, okay? And I will focus on that. So for example, Starbucks today was gapping up. I knew Starbucks was getting bought. I knew it would have the follow through. You could have bought Starbucks as a call. You could have day traded it, okay? So I had in my mind that Starbucks was a good watch today for a long. I saw the gap up in the market, in the pre-market this morning. So I focus on gaps and you can see gaps in the post-market and you can see gaps in the pre-market, okay? You can see gaps after hours. Now, I'm not taking trades after hours. I'm watching the stocks have moves and gap after hours, okay? Does this make sense? I'm not sure if I'm looking here the right, where's the questions if there are any? Oh, let me see here, questions. Okay, I think I just saw it. Um, and again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. I just found the question, the question module. So anyways, I can see stuff at night, I can see stuff in the morning, but I'm not taking the trades until the live day, okay? Makes sense? But that preset ahead of time, me deciding, me looking, me figuring out, me getting myself uh, ready mentally, financially, figuring out how much I wanna risk, what I wanna do ahead of time is, is very important. And it also makes it a heck of a lot easier to trade, all right, when you know what you want to do out of the gate, all right? And, 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 it, and it makes it so it's not so stressful for you. You wait for it, you watch the setup, and then you take it, and then you get it out when it goes to the target. Now this was the other day, this was a short, this was CVS, let's look at the chart. Stock had a rally, here is a gap, it's just so you know, this is a gap up. Now what is a gap? I'm just gonna give you a very basic definition of what a gap is. A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So CVS closed here the night before around 67.50, boom. Gapped up here to 69.50. This was back in early November. So this was a gap up, then it rallied. There also are gap downs, okay? What is a gap down? This is a gap down over here. This is a trade we're gonna review from a couple days ago. This is the drop here on the 10th. This is a gap down, stock closed here, open here, dropped. This is a bearish gap. This is a bullish gap, okay? So anyway, CVS on this particular day here was a short. On this day it was a long, on this day it was a short. Here was the 10th. So here's what it did. This was a massive sell-off that happened. And you can see the time of the day here. This is a one minute. So that was the daily. This is a one minute chart. For those of you that aren't familiar, again, uh, with, with me, I make trade decisions based purely on technical analysis on gaps. So it's technical analysis. I do uh, charting. I'm a chartist. I read price. That's what I talk about even on Fox, okay? So CVS here had a massive sell-off, very big, very fast, very quick into the open. This was on December 10th. I forget the reason, I think it was news or something like that, you can Google it. Anyways, it was real. So here it was, boom, fell off a cliff, okay? Then it rallied, boom, we shorted it. Got the drop, shorted a little bit more, did an ad, got the drop, 
She could have got out right away here at 1015. You could have held it here into noon. You could have held it even a little bit more, okay? This worked, no matter where you got, got out of it. It was a really, really nice short. And if you happen to even catch this, you could have even gotten that, all right? But here was the entry that I called in the day trading room. Entry was 73.50, 7,000 shares, which is an advanced risk, okay? Stop was 73.75. This was an amazing stop for this stock. To get a 25 cent stop in CVS at something at this price point is really, really, really good. You literally could have taken 1,000 shares in this and only risked $250 and it was a beautiful trade. Then we added, okay, when I saw that it was gonna keep going, we took more, okay, at 73.10, doubled the position, 14,000 shares, dropped, fell, exit was 72.85, I think the low of the day ended up being 72.60, 465-ish, but this was $6,300 profit, boom, boom. I'm gonna go back and show you. Here it is again. And again, you could have done this. So this was a bearish gap in CVS that we shorted on the 10th. Got it, boom, took a little bit more, got the drop, faced out, got the drop, okay? So really nice sell off here in CVS, really nice move, nice gap that just kind of fell off a cliff here and then followed through. Again, as a day trade, you're looking to day trade it, you're getting in and you're getting out. You're getting in and you're getting out, okay? So it was one trade, one day of work, and one strategy that I utilized to find that trade and do that trade. So it makes it so much easier when you are, uh, when, like, it's, like, it's like if you went to a job, whatever, whatever your job is, say you have a job, and you are in charge of this machine, say you go to a factory, you are just in charge of that machine. You're on that machine every day. You have, to, you have to do the same thing. Boom, boom, boom. That's what I do. I'm looking for the same thing every day. Do, do, do. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't know which stock I'm gonna see it in, but I know I'm looking for the same thing, for the same thing, for the same thing just like a, like a computer, okay? Like, like if you were going into a factory in a machine. And if you look at it like that, it just really, it really makes trading so much easier for you. Because if I see what I want, then I do it. And if I don't see what I want, then I don't do anything at all, okay? Any questions? And again, it goes back to what I was saying about the consistency. Um, any questions here at all? Let me see if there is any. I'm trying to. Okay. Quiet group here today. <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking. I don't see any questions unless I'm looking at this jiggy wrong. Um, I, I don't think there is any. If I'm missing anybody's questions, they'll let me know. All right, now let's talk about Starbucks, which was today's trade. Again, this was a bullish gap up. Really nice move in the Starbucks. Went to the target on the day, which was 89. Again, nice gap up. This was an upgrade. Starbucks closed here, gapped up. Boom. Dropped, rallied. We went long in here, rallied up, faced out, took it out. So again, this ended up going all the way up to 89, but this was a beautiful move. We had a perfect entry in here, rallied, rallied, okay? Again, time of the day, looking for that time of the day, that concrete time of the day when I'm looking to get in and get out and I'm looking for the momentum. Here was the Starbucks over here, here is the gap up, okay? This closed here, this gapped up, all right? And here you have the little Starbucks. So a very nice chart. Starbucks is in an uptrend, okay? And just had a beautiful entry in it today, right out of the gate. Entry was 87.80, 6,000 shares is an advanced trader risk. Stop is, was 87.40. 
I want them in the trading room. I'm calling the entry, calling the stop, calling the entry, calling the stop, calling the exit, calling the targets, live in the room, okay? And if you want to try out for the trading room, you can email me today and you can be in the room tomorrow morning. There's a lot of earnings out tonight. I don't know what we're going to be doing tomorrow, but there's a lot of things to be looking at. Adobe's tonight, Costco's tonight. I don't know how they're going to get, but there's quite a few things to look at tonight. Anyways, profit on this today was 5,280 bucks. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. This kept going, like I said. Went all the way up to 89. Nice move, almost a buck in Starbucks. Again, you're in, you're out. Time of the day, let me go back. Again, right into 10 o'clock. Right into 10 o'clock. So again, this is a gap up. Here's where it closed. Here's where it opened. So what do I do in the morning, in the pre-market? I rate the gap in Starbucks. I rate it based on the daily chart, though. I don't know if it's going to gap up or down, but I see the gap. In this case here, this was a gap up. In the case of CVS, it was a gap down. I see the gap, and then I rate it. I rate it using a 26-point rating system. That system tells me if, in fact, this is going to move higher or if, in fact, it is going to move lower. And then I make the choice to do the trade as a long or short based on the rating system and that's what you come and learn from me if you wanted to take my class and learn my strategy you learn the rating system how do i know that starbucks was the one to do today how do i know it was a long well because i rated it i rated it in the pre-market and again sometimes things gap at night like costco and adobe or tonight and you could rate them if you knew my system in the after hours tonight but i usually wait and do it in the morning sometimes things can change uh they can change to, to, to be better, they can change to be worse, okay? Any questions? And one more thing that I was gonna say here as well um, in reference to uh, the, the market and volatility that we've been talking about, right now, okay, in this environment, in 2019, and even more so going into 2020, okay? Going into 2020, the, the, when I'm looking to do things t uh, specifically every day, okay, and, and many things we do are shorts, but I will go long. Like today we did the longs. It's really important to make sure that what you're doing really doesn't need the market. You will have more consistency if you don't need the market because in this environment, again, 2019 going into 2020 with the election year coming up, Expect volatility in the market to swing around. So if you're waiting till after 10 o'clock, or you're waiting to determine the trend of the market for the day to get your trade, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be wrong. All right, whatever you think it's gonna to be. Today's a good example because of the reversal. But also, you don't wanna to have to rely on the market. The market is challenging to read, and I get it right a lot, but even I don't get it right every time. You wanna do specific stocks, specific moves, specific things that are gonna move that do not need the market, and especially going into 2020. Again, if you wanna stay consistent. Just trend trading stocks in their trend, whether they're up or down, is not going to see this level of consistency because the market affects things on any given day. Stocks that I'm doing are gapping for specific reasons and then I'm rating them for specific criteria that I'm looking for each day. And that's what's telling me A, it's going to get bought or B, it's going to sell off, which is important. Because if you need the market, you're going to get beat up and you may have been getting beat up this year because a lot of people didn't think the market was even going to keep going higher. And then it did, and then even today, the, the rally that we have, and then the sell off afterwards today. So, I mean, you know, it just proves my point going into the election year, you really, really got to know what you're doing to trade, get the right stocks, get the right picks, and not have to rely on the market. Okay. Um, any other questions? I'm trying to think if there's something else I was going to say on that. Okay. All right, so again, getting back to day trading. If you're looking to day trade, people always say, well, what percentage? This isn't, this isn't long-term investing. Day trading is you're in, you're out. You're in between 9.30 and you're out before 4 o'clock. And returns can be incredible when you think about it based on percentages, okay? You trade on margin if you're day trading. You do not need the cash value of something like Starbucks at 88 bucks a share or whatever you took it at today in order to make the money. Otherwise, you would need hundreds of thousands of dollars to trade. There's something called margin. Every day trader trades with margin. It depends what broker you trade at 
And if it's a prop place or retail place, how much margin you get. The options, you're not trading on margin. You're trading the cash account. So it's different. You're trading the cost of the option. You're just paying it. But the point is the idea of the returns are incredible because you are trading on margin. And they can be crazy high. So I look at it like it's called a risk amount of a risk of return that I'm looking for. Like if you're, I look one to one. If you're risking, a, you're risking a thousand, you're looking to make a thousand. If you're risking two thousand, your goal is to make two thousand. Sometimes you will make more. Like today is a good example because the stop in Starbucks was really a very nice stop, a forty cent stop, and a price point of that stock is amazing. Okay, great entry in that today. So the, for, so the. The risk to reward today was higher than one to one. All right, but this is not investing. It's you're in and you're out. You're in and you're out. Okay, makes sense. Any questions here so far? So when you when you when you start to get into this and you really start to make money and you really start to do well, again you're going up the ladder. Even if you're going up and, you're, and you take 10 steps up and two steps back and three steps up and one steps back, you're, you're building your conviction all the time. It doesn't mean you're never gonna make a mistake. It means you're learning and you're building your account and you're making money along the way and you're learning, you're gaining the knowledge and you're gaining something I call conviction. Conviction is something that's very important to me and it's something that I use to make the calls, to train, to maybe hold something, you know, hold something to a bigger target. Or maybe I don't have conviction in something. Maybe I lack conviction in something. And therefore, then I don't do the trade at all. Okay. So for, for what I'm looking at, though, in the gaps, and again, when I'm looking to do them, and Starbucks, I'm going to use an example because that was today's trade. I'm looking for, in the case of Starbucks, I'm looking for institutions that are buying the stock. So I'm saying, okay, our institution is going to buy this stock, institutional money, and if I see that's going to happen, then I will go long it. And the rating system tells me that, okay? So when I'm looking to short something, like, like the CVS, I'm looking for institutional selling or institutional shorting, okay? And I say, okay, this stock is being sold off by institutions. Therefore, I want to get in it short. When you go with institutional money, it's going to be a lot easier for you to make money, and especially quickly, because institutions move stocks. So, like, there are tons of funds in the market, small funds, big funds, hedge funds of all kinds of different sizes. They're taking positions in 50,000 share lots, okay? They, they will move stocks when they take a position, maybe a little, maybe a lot. All the stocks that I'm trading are stocks that you would know of, companies, Peloton, Amazon, Apple, things that you know of, CVS, okay? They're not penny stocks. They're not junk stocks. They're not crap. They're not low float stocks that don't have any volume on any normal given day that are not traded by institutional money. We're trading stocks that move or you're a blip on the radar and all you need is a couple thousand shares and you can make a lot of money because there's millions of shares in them and they're being traded by institutions and that's who's moving the stock. That's who's moving the market too, by the way. Institutions are moving the market not day traders, not retail traders, okay? Any questions? So it makes it so much easier to profit when you're with the big movers, when you're with the big money. And that is what my rating system, that is what the system that I use in the pre-market directs me towards. It helps me predict that this is gonna happen on the day. So this morning I predicted that Starbucks would go to 89. I knew it would go to 89 today. All right, and that's what it did. So it, it predicts it in the pre-market based on the gap. I'm not predicting the gap itself. Like I didn't know last night the Starbucks would gap up this morning. I had no idea. I, I don't know what Costco's gonna do tonight. I don't know if Costco's gonna gap up or Costco's gonna gap down. I'm not in any trains in Costco. I may not do Costco at all, but I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna see where it gaps and then we'll take a, a trade based on that. Follow me? Any questions? Let me know. Any questions from anyone about anything at all so far? All right, let's look at the market here. So the QQQs, here was the pop. Um, so again, let's just go over one more time here what a gap is. Market gapped up here, closed here, gapped up. 
I called some calls this day. This was a nice move up in the market. Rallied. Boom, boom, boom. Dropped. Here was a gap down in the market. Fell. Here was a gap up. Rallied. Here was a gap up. Dropped. And then here was the move over the high today. So the market right now, I'm talking about the market, I'm saying the market, but the QQQ ZTF is strong, 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 strong. So if you're in something short to the downside right now, it has to be super weak on its own, super duper weak, okay? And also right now, going into the holiday season, you have to be careful about holding too long. I wouldn't hold any trades too long overnight in anything here between now and the end of the year. But day trading is not investing. You shouldn't hold trades too long at all. Even if you're doing options that are working a day or two, all right? It's a way of producing income, not investing. You're taking money out of the market daily in fast moves. And one of the things that most day traders forget or, or just don't understand is that this is not investing. You're chunking it out. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. You're chunking it, okay? And this CVS, again, is another great example of institutional money because in this case here, again, Starbucks was institutional money that bought the stock. Today, CVS was institutional selling. Institutional selling. Look at the move. How could a stock at this price point fall off a cliff? CVS is up here at 75. What is this down in here where it dropped on fell off a cliff? 72, 72.60. So CVS, a $75 price point stock, dropped and opened and fell $2.40 $2 right out of the gate in the first five, 10 minutes of the day. That's a dump. It's selling action, okay? And you can make money as a trader by shorting the selling action that's coming in from the institution selling. Again, who knows why they sold their CVS, but they did. Make sense? And so you're getting in and you're shorting that. But most of the trades that we're in and out are less than 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll hold something an hour. This is again, the day trades, not the options trades, but every once in a blue moon, I'll hold something a little bit longer, bigger move, but I'm always trying to get in, in the first half an hour, okay? Any questions by anyone at all here so far today? Really quiet group here today. I don't see any questions at all. Does anyone have any questions of me? Or am I just, everyone's mesmerized by everything I'm saying, taking it all in like a sponge. <laughs> you're all sponges today with me talking. Well, hopefully you're learning something. Anyways, what I do is just focus on one strategy, usually one pick a day, maybe more than one. And again, I'm in and I'm out and I'm looking for the volatility and I'm looking for the move. I'm looking for institutional selling or institutional buying, okay? That is really what I'm focused on. So for me, okay, this is really what, what, what I'm looking for is to, to just chunk it out every day. One amount of whatever I'm risking, okay? And it could be a different ticker symbol every single day. Every single day it could be a different ticker symbol. I never know, okay? Like I said, there's a bunch of things out tonight. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I know I'm gonna do something tonight because there's so many earnings out, but I don't know what, okay? Um, okay, now I'm seeing some questions. How do I spot, how do I spot what? Were you talking about a specific stock? I see the gap in the pre-market or the post-market. Okay, like for example, Costco is going to gap tonight. It has earnings, it's going to move. I don't know if it moves up or it's gonna move down, but I will see it in the after hours tonight. After four o'clock, you can watch Costco. Then I will rate it per my system. And then I rate it determining, are institutions gonna come in and buy it tomorrow on the day, which is the day that I'm gonna play it, because I'm not playing in the after hours. You can't do options after hours and I'm not doing equity trades after hours because it's too risky, okay? Equity trades during the day, when I do them, I put the stop in. Like CVS had a stop. If CVS had dropped below where I had the stop at 87.40, would have been stopped out and I would have lost. That did not happen, but I had the stop in. The stop is like the insurance, it's like the protection. And I don't use stops for options because it's just whatever I risk. So that's it, that's the stop. The stop is the risk, okay, and the option for me. 
I have a rating system, yes. The rating system tells me if the stock's gonna get bought on the day or if the stock's gonna sell off on the day. And that's how I know whether to go long or short it, okay? Now let's go over BA. BA was a nice short. Three, I called the 350 puts back on Monday in, in, at around lunch, actually, I called this a little bit late on the day. And this stock had a beautiful, beautiful move down and continued down and then gapped down. I'm gonna show you the chart on this here. So back in the day here, this is the night I called this. Then guess what? It gapped down the following day, fell. You could have actually gotten out of the trade here. And then the next day it gapped down even more. So the nice thing about doing the overnights when I call the options trades, I have an options newsletter is sometimes they will gap into the move. Like I'll call them and you'll get up the next morning and, it'll be, and you'll be up, you'll be up in the morning and you'll be in the trade and you won't know how much you're up until you get up. And then you say, oh my gosh, I'm up a lot. Sometimes it'll gap into it. And that's what happened here. This was a nice put. Okay. So I'm showing you three risk amounts here, depending on where you're at. Again, the size of your account. This is for an option trade. There was an option call from the options newsletter. Okay. An advanced risk on that would be $7,000. Cost of the option was three fifty. dollars Exit 11 would have been a $15,000 profit from Monday to yesterday. A really, 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 really nice trade. Beautiful trade. Beautiful return on investment within 48 hours. If you had an intermediate trader risk, 10 contracts is $3,500 risk. You still could have doubled your money and made $7,500. Again, really, really, really nice trade. 200% return on investment within 48 hours. Beginner risk, $3.50 to contract, $700 risk, $1,500 profit. Again, boom, 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 okay? And this went into the move, dropped into the move. So I predicted on the night that this stock would continue to have an institutional selling. I was right, boom, boom, boom. And in fact, I called it, let me go back to the trade call here, to expire tomorrow. So I knew this would happen this week. Sometimes I give a little bit more time, but I didn't think it needed it, okay? And I, I was right. Very, 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 very nice short. That was in BA. So that was, this is an option trade. I'm showing you again, same system, same philosophy, same strategy. A different way to take the trade is an option instead of an equity trade, but still pretty quick, okay? But again, you're protected in an option because the most you can ever lose if the trade fails is whatever you paid. So if you paid $3.50, you wouldn't lose any more than that, all right? So I'm calling calls, straight calls and straight puts on the options letter. But if you want to day trade actively, you have to look at the size, the size in your trade, 1,000 shares, 2,000 shares. Again, set your goals. If you want to make a certain amount of money, six figures a year, whatever you want to make, you have to back it out. You say, okay, well, if I want to make $1,000 a day, then I got to get a dollar move in something, or I'm going to get 50 cents in something to take 2,000 shares. You have to figure it out to back it out like that. But you have to have the money to take it, to take it, okay, like I'm saying. But the reality is you can you can say, okay, it's January 1, I'm going to do this. And then by March 1st, I'm going to do this. Then March to, you know, May, and you, and you track it out so that you're always moving up. The goalpost is moving, okay, so that you're getting somewhere with this. It doesn't mean that you're never going to make a mistake. You will have to learn along the way. Uh, let me see if there's a question. Um, I'm doing day trades as equity trades, straight out equity trades. As far as options trades, sometimes I will day trade options trades. Sometimes I'll hold them overnight. So I'm doing, I'm doing them out for the week or two weeks, but I'm not day trading options every day. Some days I hold them. BA was a hold. Some days I will get out of them in the day. Some days I won't. If the stock makes a move in the day, why wouldn't I get out of it? Even if, uh, and, and this is where people just, oh gosh, I, listen, people, listen up. Your goal is to make money. Your goal is to make money consistently. That's how I started the talk today. I can't, if I had a dollar for every story of a person that told me that they held something too long, in this market, you're gonna get killed if you hold things too long. If you're up, if you risk $1,000, you're up $1,000. Even if the trade has three more weeks to go, are you really wanna hold it? Really? What if you risk 1,000 and you're up 2,000 and the trade still has another week to go? You really wanna hold it? Why? Tomorrow you can take another trade. I'm calling so many trades. When you look at all my equity trades and my options trades, I'm calling plenty of trades for people to get 
make so much money. It doesn't matter. You don't have to hold these things. People, I don't, again, this is the investor mentality. I never grew up with that. I never, never, never grew up with that. I didn't know anything about trading when I started. I never had an investor mentality. I never had a buy and hold mentality. I never, never did. So that's probably why I'm really well, uh, do really well at being active. But so many people have this buy and hold thing. And even if it's short and hold, this hold, 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 hold like you're holding on to it for dear life. I had this one trader. He said, oh, it looks really good. But the chart looks really good. The chart looks really good. The chart looks good. Yeah, the chart looks good until Trump tweets and there isn't a China deal and everything falls off the planet. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just got done talking about volatility. Training is making money. You're not Warren Buffett. You cannot suffer to hold things and lose money in trades that are up because you will lose in trades that don't work. Do not lose in trades that are up. Do you understand? I mean, that's just being like smart and people, people make that mistake all the time. And I only have a few more minutes here. I know I started late. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da, somebody said, I don't know it's I don't know what point you were trying to make about the double edged sword. You lost me there. Yeah, a lot of places don't have commissions now. That's true. Anyways, focus on the time of the day. Focus on that about buying options, doing them. Again, getting back to what I was saying here. If you want to do this for yourself, if you want to work for yourself, you can do it. You must be focused. You must book money. You must take profits out when you're up. The nice thing about trading where they're doing options or equities is you can do it from home. You can do it from home. But you must be realistic. So many people, and I hear this all the time in marketing emails. Well, you can take five hundred dollars and make a hundred grand in three months. Really? Seriously? Come on. I mean, I think you got to be realistic. You risk five hundred dollars. You're looking to make five hundred. You do it Monday. You do it Tuesday. You do it Wednesday. You do it Thursday. You do it Friday. By the end of the week, you should have between two thousand twenty-five hundred dollars. It's the consistency. And it's a consistency in the strategy. And I don't trade any stocks that I don't like that don't rate per my system. What if they go on to work and I don't do them? Well, they, they go on to work without me. If I rated it and it didn't rate well and it still works anyways, I don't feel like I missed out. I didn't lose any money. I didn't make any money. I probably did something else that day that worked that did rate well. Because nine times out of ten, there's usually things that rate well. Okay. And again, there's a lot of stuff to look at tonight for tomorrow. Okay. Anyways, risking money can be hard, but it's, it's, it's the idea of learning. Once you learn and you have the confidence in yourself and the, and the strategy, then you can put the cash on. You can put the risk on. When you say, I have 100% conviction that BA is going to drop, I can risk $7,000 to make fifteen. Do you understand? But when you don't know what to do and you're, and you're so new and you don't understand what's going on, you don't understand the system, that's why you have to take the class. Everyone has to take the class to be in my live trading room, all right? It's a, it's a prerequisite to do it. And, and, and that's because people really have to know what to do in order to be successful in my mind. But your dreams are totally achievable with hard work. And I believe that it becomes easier over time. You're chunking out money every single day, okay? Um, any questions here so far? If this is you and you've been losing money for the last several years, say you lost 50 grand for the last five years attempting to day trade, you must stop what you're doing. Whatever strategy you're doing is not working. You have to be honest with yourself. And I know this is a hard pill for people to swallow. People will go years and years and years and years and years and lose, and they can't swallow the pill. They will still drink the Kool-Aid that they can figure out what, how to do it on their own and that they don't need any help and they don't have to pay for a class and they're going to make it and what they're doing is working and all they have to do is buy in the 50 period moving average. No, okay? All along the while, this person was making money every time this went up, but then he lost more. Then he made a little money, then he lost more. Then he made a little money, then he lost lower, but over the course of years, he's losing. This is problematic. It really starts to drain on you as the time goes on. The best thing you could do for yourself to turn things around is recognize that you, in fact, do not know what you're doing if you're not making money by the end of the calendar year. We're come December. If you didn't make money this year, then your strategy you're using does not work. So you have two choices. One, pay someone that's an expert in the market like me to learn my system, what I know, or follow my trades. Or two, stop trading and quit. And don't do it anymore because you're going to bleed money into 2020 if you continue to trade and go down this path. And eventually, it just takes 
takes a toll on people. It takes a toll on their confidence and their finances. The best thing you can do is to get honest with yourself and look at yourself in the mirror. This doesn't mean you're a failure. If what you've been doing has not been working, it doesn't mean you personally are a failure. It means the strategy that you're doing to trade that you're using is a failed strategy. Do you understand? So many people think, well, I have to accept then that I failed if I quit. I have to accept that I failed if I have to pay someone like Melissa to learn her system. That's not true. It took me three years to figure out how to do my system, three years to put it all together. It was like a lifetime for me because it was a very difficult period in my life, but I figured it out. I think I'm an anomaly. I think I'm an unusual person to have done that. I'm an extremely strong individual. I don't think a lot of people have the money or the time or the wherewithal, the strength of character to do it. So you pay someone and that makes the process easier for you. But I found that through the years, talking to people and having people follow me and come to free webinars like this, they just don't want to, they, they don't want to come to a, a come to Jesus moment. They don't want to say that what they're doing is not working because somehow that would make them feel like a failure. In the end, you're not a failure if you say the strategy that I've been doing doesn't work. Shorting tops and buying bottoms doesn't work. And if you admit that doesn't work, you'll stop losing money, number one. And number two, you'll turn things around. And I think 2020 is a year for fresh starts, a year for people to turn things around, a year for people to really make the most out of their life. I think it's a turning point, numbers wise, all of it, everything together. And I know I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna quickly go to the strategy and the class information here if you're interested. I teach a system, it's called the Golden Gap System. It's one strategy, that's all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps. It's something that I teach in my class and you don't need to do anything else, okay? It's what got me on TV because I'm so good at it. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will make money if you follow a system. You can do this from home. And the class, if you're interested, is this weekend. Now, I know today is Thursday. This is the last class of the year, though, because of the holiday. It's December 14th and 15th. 9 to 5 Eastern Time, class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Cost of the class is $64.99, okay? Email me if you want to sign up. I'm melissaatthestockswoosh.com. The combo includes the trends. It's two classes for $69.99. So you take the class Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday, this is 11 to 2 on Tuesday, and you would save, okay? Two classes for one price. If you cannot do the class in December, the January class is January 11th to 12th, 9 to 5. Cost of the class is $64.99, okay? If you can't do the class this weekend. I am doing a holiday deal, though, through Saturday. If you want to do the class this weekend, you'd have to sign up by tomorrow. If you want to do the class in January, you have through this Sunday to sign up for this offer. You would get the trading room free for one year, one year with the class. You just have to sign up and pay by Sunday. But if you want to do the class this weekend, you'd have to sign up and pay by tomorrow. If you want to do the class in January, you could sign up and pay Sunday the 15th of December this weekend and then start the trading room in January. Normally I charge four grand a year for the room after the class. So this is a really, really nice deal. But Trust me, you're doing yourself a favor. You will save money in the long run if you get proper education on a right system. And if you're losing, that what your system is doing doesn't work. If you're interested in only in options, then I have an options newsletter. It's $59.99. It's one year. I only have an annual membership. The trades are emailed to you. You get the trades. BA was one of them this week. There was a ton, a ton this week, actually, but I just talked about the one. Any questions from anyone about anything? I think I'm over a couple of minutes. Listen, 2020 is going to be a big year. Hopefully everyone learned something today. Any questions? Okay. Thank you.